All right, this one's gonna be on Lutris. It is a game library manager installer kind of thing for Linux. I actually did use Lutris like 15 years ago and that was the last time I've used it. Um, but this one's a modern Lutris and it is a, I would say so-so, you know, program. Uh, the version I recommend you get is the one from the um, Flatpak mainly because we're installing games here and uh for me i want to install like old games you know like windows xp era uh, that's like my ultimate goal in the future is to have like uh you know like all the uh, windows xp era games and stuff like that uh, but on linux because uh then i can use like sunshine and uh, moonlight to stream it if i wanted to and so i was trying to um use uh you know a you know, Wine Prefix Manager and Lutris was one of them. I was gonna use Play on Linux, but uh, I think the, um, I think they're abandoning like, the old version and they're working on a new one, but it's taking so long. But anyways, this is Lutris and I'm gonna show you how to install, you know, regular, you know, Windows EXE games, or you can use software in here too if you want, but we're gonna focus on games here. Anyways, uh, download your games. So I'm gonna give you some examples of what I'm using here. This is GameTop. It's a site where they give you free, like, you know, casual PC games. And so uh, nothing here is paid or anything. There is like a little, actually I'll explain that later on, but basically all these EXEs in here, uh, you can actually download any games you want in here for free, right? No signups or nothing like that, right? So that's what we use. We use uh, Land Grabbers is one of my uh, favorite games. I play, I'll probably say like uh, every couple of years I play this game. Uh, it's pretty fun. So that's what we're gonna do, right? Uh, so uh, download the EXEs and uh, install Lutris from the Flatpak version. The reason why I recommend that is because uh, it comes with all the libraries, uh, especially like the old games, they require like 32-bit uh, libraries. And if you're getting Lutris from your official repositories, they uh, usually won't work with like, you know, audio issues because they don't have like the 32-bit um, libraries for some of these old games, right? So the flat pack version is what you want. And how do we do that? Uh, what is my name for that? Lutris. All right, so this is how you would install it in your terminal here. Flat pack, install, flat hub, and then, you know, net Lutris dot Lutris. And that's how you install it. And once you have this program up and running here, all right, uh, we're gonna do the add sign here, the plus sign, add game, and you uh, add local install games here, and you will get a name. We'll call it uh, land grabbers. The story name I usually just put lowercase land grabber, and we're gonna use uh, wine, right? And you can fill this out if you want, but not necessary. And then the second. Uh, tab here game options this is where you point it to the installer all right um you know where the game is at and see here our home and land grabbers exe here that we download from uh, the game top website right and And uh, for the wine prefix, aka where do you want to install your games to, uh, just point in here. And um, you can create like a folder like games here, like I did. And so this one, I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call this Land Grabbers. All right. And then we'll hit OK. So now it points it to, you know, your username, games, and Land Grabbers, right? Now, if you know that you're going to use 32 bit, um, you should use that mainly because it will save space. Uh, that's the main reason you still use 64 because you know, most windows they can use 64 and then uh, run the games in 32 bit. But uh, if you want to save space and you know that the game is 32 bit, you just select it. Otherwise you can just do auto and it'll, you know, it'll waste a little bit of space, but not too much. Anyways, that's really all you gotta do in there. If you have other options that you want, like if you know this one is uh, anti-cheat or not, mostly I just leave it alone, right? But yeah, that's it. That's all you gotta do in here. Uh, not nothing major. And then after you've you know added all those um, 
exes and paths and stuff like that you just hit save and right now it'll have this um game here right but this one is just the installer so you actually have to install it so you hit play here and it'll do like you know in windows where you do next 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 to install All right, what's it doing? Uh, it's taking a little while. Okay, there you go. So this is, um, it'll pop up, say agreed, next, next, next. Just like we do in Windows and stuff like that, All right? So, you know, the thing I hate about Lutris in here is like, um, I'll show you in a minute, but um, basically you set it up as the installer and then you have to change the path once you install the program. It's so stupid. I mean, I think Play on Linux did it better, but this is how you do it on Lutris here. All right, you finish. Now, once you finish, um, that's the thing with the games on uh, GameTop is it always pops up and it links back to their website every time you play the game. It's kind of annoying, but I'll show you how to skip all that, right? Um, so, but after you uh, install it, you want to right click on the game and go to configure. And in here, you want to do um, game options. And now since we already installed the game, we want to change the path to where the actual game is installed, right? Not the installer here. So we installed it into games, uh, land grabbers, and basically you go to your C drive, um, program files, and this one's from GameTop. So you go to GameTop, uh, Land Grabbers. Usually Land Grabbers will use like this uh, Game Shell or Desktop or or one of these, but you don't want to use those EXEs because once you play the game or something like that and you exit out of the game, it'll always pop up that uh, stupid page here to do that. So they usually have like another EXE, that the main game, which is either called Game EXE or uh, Warp EXE here, right? And that's the one you want to use. Um, and this applies to all the games they have on their site um, that you can do. But there you go, that's how you do. And you point it to that Warp uh, Game EXE here, and that will be the main game. And then you hit Save. And that's it. Now you can um, actually launch this play. And it should uh, play the game. Right. So yeah, that's the the game. Let me uh, lower the sound a little bit. But yeah, it works. Let's see you play. If you never played this game, it's kind of like a tower defense, but a little bit different from the traditional tower defense here. I don't think there's a lot of games like this, but uh, I play this every couple of years, like I said. Let's see here. Okay, gotcha. It's the tutorial page. Anyways, the game works, and that's how you would do it. All right, if you ever want to, like, um, I think minimize your window, you hit uh, Alt and Enter, and this will be, like, window screen, and Alt Enter again to full screen. So if you ever want to get out, or, you know, if, if the game is stuck or something, that you can do that. Anyways, that's how you would do it. And that's it. That's how you would do that. All right. Uh, maybe install another game. How about that? Let's do another one. I have another one in here. Let me see. Add a game. So basically, we do the same thing, right? This one is uh, Jack of. What is that? Jack of all tribes. Um, if 
I spell it correctly. And uh, as far as the runner, we use Wine also, and we're gonna point it to the installer, which is in our home. Jack of all tribes. There we go. And uh, the working prefix directory, aka where do you want to save it to? We're gonna save it to games. I'm gonna call this um, Jack of all tribes. All right, and that's it. Hit OK. I know this one is a 32-bit game, so I'm going to use that just to save some space. And anything else you need to check? Uh, nothing really. I mean, you can always disable, um, you know, anti-cheat and stuff like that because most of these games are, you know, offline games. You don't need those things. Or if you ever want to change any of this other stuff, you can go on Advance here and change it to whatever you like, right? It depends on you and uh, if you know the, the stuff. Uh, that you need, then you can do that for advance. And then you hit save, that's it. And now we have the installer. Uh, and then again, you still have to install the game, which is kind of weird. You actually have to point to the installer. After you install the game, you gotta change it to the game that you just installed, it's so stupid. But that's just how they do it here. <coughs> And again, like I said, um, you want to use the flat pack version, mainly because it has 32-bit stuff. If you know the games is 32-bit, you definitely want to have 32-bit libraries. Otherwise, sometimes you don't get sound, which is what happened to me when I was using the, um, you know, the uh, the one from uh, the Arch repositories. Uh, it, it, there's no sound, so it was so stupid. So, anyways, next here. And so this is how you install the game and you know my ultimate goal in the future. I don't think I'm gonna do it now because um there's a lot of like, new programs or new like launchers they're gonna make. Like uh there's gonna be like this Proton but without Steam. That's what I want. I don't want Steam part of it because most of the games I'm gonna play is offline and I don't want Steam on it. So they're working on something like that, which I think is gonna come into Lutris and all these other launchers like bottles and, and stuff like that. So, you know, we'll do that. So this page, see, it always pops up after you install it or even play the game. And like I said, if you want to uh, bypass all that, you go to configure here. And we still want to point it to the actual game exe now that we installed it. So we're gonna select files. And we're gonna point it to Jack of all tribes here. Go to C, program, uh, game top, Jack of all tribes. And again, in here, see that they have these uh, stupid EXEs here. These are actually like fake EXEs to promote their site. And you don't want that. It's usually another EXE. It's uh, usually, what was that? Warp uh, Games here, or sometimes it's called a game EXE, or maybe just the title of the game. So point to a different one if it's not the correct one, right? So this is the one here. And that's how you know um, that the game will work now. So we hit save here. Now, sometimes if you ever want to, uh, let's say maybe this is not a, a you know, maybe it's a different, um, um, what was that? Windows game or something like that. You can always do configurations here. And um, for the old school people that use the old school wine, this is how we did it back in the days. You know, you can select different Windows operating system. Right, but this one works on Windows 10 also, so it doesn't matter. But sometimes if the game is like pure Windows XP only, then you want to do Windows XP. And, you know, you can test out some of these other stuff like audio and stuff like that in here. But like I said, um, not necessary for this game because I know it works. And sometimes this one doesn't have the, you know, the, the image of the games. So you might have to manually add the image that you want. If it's not already there in the EXE, so uh, this one it extracts it from the EXE here. This one doesn't really have it, mainly because you know they they butcher the uh, the game EXE just to promote their site. But you can always go in here and configure it, and then you know change it to a different uh, image if you want. So it's not a big deal. But we already set it up here, and now we can play it here, right? And it should come in a minute.
and there you go. This is the game. It has audio and everything. Skip. Uh, this is another game I, I usually play every couple of years. <laughs> Very casual games, you know, as offline casual games, and um, sometimes that's enough, you know. Anyways, that's how uh, you set up the games. Uh, pretty simple. And so there you go. You can keep adding uh, more you want. Uh, you can probably do this with uh, GOG games too if you have the installers for it. Same process, right? Uh, as far as like the differences, let me show you. Uh, which one was that? So this one was a 64 bit uh, Jack of All Tribes here. Let me show you the. Uh, the file size. So this one is 460 megabytes, right? And let's see the 32 bit one. See, this one is uh, 309. So that's like 100 megabytes of difference if you're using like 32 bit or 64 bit, right? Uh, same thing with the land grabbers. This one is the 32 bit. Look at this here 349, right? As the total for our wiring prefix. And the 64 bit, look at this one here. 500 megs, so you can save a couple of hundred megabytes just by knowing exactly what the game can run on 32 bit or 64 bit, right? But like I said, you can still use the 64 bit and uh, install your games if you want to. Um, you probably even save more space if you use it, you know, in a single uh, wine prefix instead of having like um, individual ones. But that's my goal for the future. I'm gonna do like one per game and it's probably not economical uh, in terms of, you know, hard drive space to do that on Linux right now. I hope in the future they can, like, maybe, like, sim link all the ones that's very common and doesn't change all the time and it'll save a lot of space, but that's not what they're doing right now. Anyways, um, that's how you install games on here and that's how you use uh, Lutris. Pretty simple for, you know regular exe games if you have portable games all you got to do is just drop it in here and create a shortcut like we did before right you can go um what was it uh, i think you just add and then you know create a, a shortcut to it right just pointing to the, the the game exes right let me see here all right just pointing to the, the executable instead of the installer you just point it to the portable games that you got and, and that's all you got to do really that's not that big of a deal Anyways, that's Lutris in a nutshell, and uh, I mainly don't use any of these other ones because, like I said, I don't want it to be connected to anything online. I just want to have, like, everything in my stuff, um, offline games, casual games, um, and I'm trying to, like, replace the, uh, uh, you know, like a Windows XP machine and just use Linux so I can stream it with Moonlight and Sunshine, and so I can play it physically or even, like, remotely. Um, like, let's say if I'm you know, sitting outside uh, my patio or something like that, then I can still play it uh, streaming-wise. Anyways, that's Lutris. Uh, check it out if you never used it. It's kind of like a replacement for my um, Play on Linux because Play on Linux hasn't been... I think they're still developing, but I haven't, like, heard any news about a new uh, Play on Linux 5 or, or something like that. But yeah, the uh, play on Linux uh, when you install stuff uh, manually, oh, it's really, really simple. This one takes a little bit more work, but it's not that hard either. Anyways, that's Lutris. If you want to play your Windows games on Linux, that'd be for this one.